Yeah, so, well, I mean, Tony Blair is, you know, I mean, he's like the Bill Clinton of Britain, you know, um, very in bed with a lot of these agendas and very willing to sell out uh, people, where it, whether it's British people or really anyone else uh, to, you know, the corporate, corporate overlords. As far as digital ID goes, I mean, that's been his new thing ever since he founded the Tony Blair Institute for Change or, or whatever it's called. But when he was prime minister of Britain, he was pushing uh, to have a government issued ID in Britain. Um, and there was a lot of pushback against it because of of concerns about, you know, Orwellian actions by the state. Um, But of course, there's a big push to have it happen sort of anyway in Britain now. Uh, But he's trying to implement that same program elsewhere as well, and definitely pushing for a lot of a lot of this digital ID stuff, which the idea of the whole digital ID thing is to have this one ID tied to literally everything you do, including all of your online activity, your medical history, um, you know, your cell phone character uh, carrier, uh, your your travel, I mean, literally everything, uh, have all of this in one centralized place that is very likely that basically intelligence agencies are going to use to surveil you. And the real danger of it um, is that they're going to use this to sort of do predictive policing is what they call, which is what Palantir, the contractor for all of this in the U.S., has been doing for a long time to try and predict crime before it happens. And there was a big push for this under the Trump administration um, from William Barr specifically. uh, He said it was about stopping mass shootings before they can happen. And they were trying to create this organization modeled after DARPA called HARPA, which Biden actually made. It's called ARPA-H. They just moved one letter. There's the public justification, right? And so basically they wanted to put AI in charge of going, uh, you know, going through people's social media history to identify warning signs and people who might be uh, violent in the future. You apply this to all this other misinformation stuff and treating misinformation, which we know is just information the state doesn't agree with most of the time, uh, to a crime or to terrorism, it starts to get really insane. And the best way to stop this is to opt out of big tech and opt out of big social media and start building or looking for some sort of alternative because they're very uh, complacent in the sense that they think everyone's going to stay dependent on all of these platforms and services. And there's, we can make alternatives or we can do something else. We don't have to use, you know, Google and Microsoft who are all contractors with the IDF and, you know, um, US intelligence and and the government and all of this stuff. We don't have to do that. Um, We can do something else. And then it all falls apart for them if we starve them of our data.